All right, so I'm recording tonight with somebody who has their own Wikipedia page, so that's cool, and he gets uh, paid to do exactly what he wants for a living, which is what we want every South Dakota kid to grow up and be able to do. I am super excited, super fangirl, going to try not to just shriek a lot during this one, but I am talking with David Bulldog Mashad. Hello, David. Hey, how you doing? Good, and you are not in South Dakota tonight. You're in Phoenix. Yep. Which is where you live full time now. Yeah. And that is because your career took you there or because uh, you yeah, just love you know, Phoenix? Um, there's not a ton of high level um, mixed martial arts training and gyms in South Dakota. And I really enjoyed where I was at. I was training in Sioux Falls for a while. Uh, with Bruce Hoyer and it was really good, but there just wasn't a, enough bodies. You know, I had right. like two or three or four good guys to work out with every day. So it just wasn't enough. Some guys can get away with it. I didn't feel like uh, I was going to be able to. So I made the move to Phoenix. A lot of that depends on your weight class and, and your fight schedule and goals and travel availability and all of that. Correct. Yeah. Well, I mean, most of it for me, it was the weight class. We had a couple guys that were around my weight that were kind of serious about it, but not as serious as me. You know, they had just different things going on, which wasn't a big deal. You know, not mad about it or anything, but right. was, a lot of times it was kind of just me and Bruce and he's a lot bigger than me and just needed some guys that would give me more of a look of what I'll actually see in a fight. Right. I can't. My my daughter actually trains at Next Edge. She's kind of got it on hold right now because of the pandemic. Um, but like when I when she came home and I said, so what has Bruce taught you? And like she leapt up, yanked me over, pulled me down and choked me out. And I all the way out. That's, out of her. that's intense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She was like, look, I'm not I'm not afraid to park over there anymore. And I'm like, good. <laughs> so, yeah, it took me a little while to come around, but. <laughs> At least she's getting her money jiu worth. I, good, I think uh, yeah. more people should do jujitsu. I don't think it's a bad thing to know how to defend yourself a little bit. I don't know if every mom cheers on their kid being able to choke out mom. What? What? Um, so you grew up West River, yep. um, Pine Ridge. Yeah, uh, used to be Shannon County, Oglala, Lakota County. Now, correct. In and I think it was like five or six. I don't know how long ago it was, but. Yeah, it's been a little while that they've changed it. Uh, long enough that I think it's people are more commonly calling it Oglala Lakota and not going, you know, Shannon County. Yeah. So what um, – and you – basically, you played every sport in high school. Um, yeah, mostly, uh, except cross country and basketball, I guess. It was the two that were offered at Pine Ridge that I didn't really partake in. Did that come from, as we see a lot in smaller school districts where they pretty much need everybody that can play to show up and play? Or did uh, that come from I those mean, reports? I don't think those guys that they just kind of threw on the team just so they'd have enough. You know, I was uh, doing a little better than a lot of people. Right. Because you went on and, and um, did, uh, football and wrestling at college level or yeah, I went to SDSU. Um, I was on the football team for one year. I didn't, I don't say that I played football at SDSU. I say I was on the team because I was just on the practice squad. And then I wrestled for a few years and I, I, I wrestled, got on the mat and it was fun. You know, it was a good time. Did you know that you wanted to pursue professional sports as your profession? <sighs> Uh, yeah, what did you think you were going to be when you grew up? What was your plan? As a little kid, what did you want to grow up to be? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I guess as a, as a kid, it was like, want to be a pro football player probably or something. Um, and then I kind of wanted to be like, a like a zoologist almost. Um, I wanted to go study polar bears and stuff when I was in high school. Things that we don't have in South Dakota. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I uh, had a good had a good teacher. She got me into journalism. Then I was like, well, you know, I'll, I'll, I can go into journalism, go and write, write about, about polar bears. bears for National Geographic or something. Yeah. So 
that's what I went to school for. I went to school for journalism and I graduated with a degree from SDSU in mass communications. And I did that for a little bit while I was back in South Dakota until I kind of start making enough money just in the past few years since I've been down here to support myself doing that. So when, when did you know for sure you were going to make a profession out of fighting? I don't know. You know, I don't, I still don't know. I still don't know if I am. And you're I very young. You have time. Uh, well, it was when I was in high school, I was doing it and, you know, I had my first fight at 15 and just kept going. And I don't think I, I guess I'd have to say when I moved to, phoenix would be when i was like okay i gotta do this i really gotta make money now if i'm gonna be living out here because i would go to sioux falls and train and i'd stay at friends houses and just you know kind of couch crash and stuff and then i'd go back to pine ridge and i'd work i was working for a couple of uh, weekly newspapers out there native sun and lakota country times so go back i'd write as much and take as many pictures as i could and get as many articles as i could in to make some money and then go train for a few weeks, get a fight. Cause at that stage, you're not making a lot of money. But right. Nice. I really enjoyed it. You know, working at a, at a weekly newspaper that I, sometimes I'd kind of get um, pigeonholed into like the sports beat. And like, okay, go to this, go to that. But I enjoyed doing all the different stuff. I enjoyed doing everything, you know, at a weekly, you got to do whatever. And I wasn't on staff. I was just uh freelance. So I could choose what, pick and choose what I wanted to do, but it was fun. I really enjoyed it. And for anybody that's watching this, that maybe doesn't understand what mixed martial arts is or MMA, usually if we say, well, you know what the UFC is, they do. And you have, you fought in every well-known, you fought for UFC and Bellator. I yeah, mean, you're basically every uh, high level, you are the American, big time, high level American promotion. Nothing. Right. Overseas. Right. So how, when you, and I know you've done a lot when you come home with working with young people and talking to kids about growing up and growing up to be what you want to be. When when you look back at growing up in Pine Ridge, did you think that you would have those level of opportunities? So a uh, thing about that is like, I had more opportunities than most kids growing up in Pine Ridge. You know, both both my parents had jobs. They were teachers, which, you know, they're not millionaires or anything, but they made enough that if I wanted to go do to a camp or I wanted to do something and they would they was able to financially support me to do that. And a lot of kids don't have that. And they were both college educated, so school was important to them. You know, I had that I could go home and I had enough to eat and my parents would be like, hey, did you get your homework done? Or my mom would, you know, I kind of, and so I had a, I had a better, a better shot at doing what I wanted to do than a lot of kids. When you think about other kids in that area, I mean, on a national level, the Pine Ridge area, it's one of the poorest, the poorest counties in the nation. There's not a lot of kids that have the shot financially, what, what do you think that they need to focus on? It, I, you hate to tell little kids that they have to find it in themselves, but if they do, what, how do you tell them it's worth it? Yeah, you know, it's hard. It's hard to get through. Um, it's hard to make, make them realize um, that there's a big world out there. You know, a lot of, a lot of kids don't really leave the res unless they're, in sports going to play or if they mm -hmm. do it's going up to rapid and that's kind of it so you know just gotta show them because there's a lot of people that have left the res and done what they wanted to do you know all of the mostly all the teachers all the native teachers that are there they've gone to different schools they've gone somewhere else and done this and that so just i think seeing all the different people that have left and done something and done something that they wanted to, got an education, came back. It shows them that, you know, anybody could do it. So that, do you think that's an important part of it? That's that some of them came back. I mean, we talk about that statewide. A lot of kids grow up and leave South Dakota. You got to show yeah. that you want to come back. Yeah, definitely. I know as soon as I'm done, when I'm done fighting, I'd like to 
be back in South Dakota for sure. Um, you know, I'm not, I don't like the, the, the city. I'm not a city boy. Phoenix is, yeah. and where I'm at in Phoenix, we're close to like, I could get out of town in a couple minutes, but I still, it's just too busy for me. I enjoy. They just don't have the snow. <laughs> No, we can you can go up to Flagstaff about two hours away and get some good snow. But yeah, I'd rather be home. I'd rather be back in South Dakota. And yeah, seeing people that it just having the people who have left and done something and got an education or this and that, and then seeing them come back, that's shows the kids, you know, instead of saying like they could say it about me, you know, like, oh well Bulldog is doing this and that, but if they never see me, then it's almost like a fictional character, you know, it's right, like someone right. in a book, unless you're actually right. real and they can see you and they can talk to you and they can converse with you. You can tell them what you did. They see that, oh, you went to Pine Ridge your whole life, you know, and then you went to college. Now you're on TV. That's the big thing. They're like, oh, you were on TV. Oh, you were on TV. That's something cool whenever they see me. I have been uh, at your fights in Sioux Falls, and I have been um, seated close to some of your home team champions. That there was a lot of flags, there was a lot of there was a lot of cheering. I mean, I think you have a lot of hometown support. They came to oh, my definitely. town, and <laughs> even, even like um, in 2020 or 2019, at the end of the year, when I fought in New York City on New Year's Eve. You know, New Year's Eve in New York City is not cheap. No. There were a lot of people there, you know, in the crowd. They had all their um, Oglala Lakota flags flying. And I love it. I love whatever. Oh, yeah. I walk there. I get fired up. So, And, and when you and walk into the ring and raise that flag, I swear, I thought the side of the building was going to come down. There was such a response to that. And and yeah, the whole crowd. Right. I mean, you were the you were the the fighter we were all cheering for. You were from South Dakota. But when you came out with the flag, I pretty much had to hold on to my seat for from the response of the crowd. So Yeah, and that's something I've done uh you no know, since I was in high school when we first started fighting. Um we had a flag that we'd carry out. So and it's the same flag. So it's it's nice. I I really love it. Carries a lot of sentimental value. What does your heritage mean to you when you travel? How do you do you feel like you represent your heritage for people that aren't from here? I mean, not really, you know, I'm, I'm a very light skinned native. So unless you actually know me, you know, if you're walking by on the street, most people, they wouldn't think twice about me or anything. Just think that I was just another white guy probably. So unless people actually start to know me, but I definitely feel like the people that do know me know how important it is to me. Um, and I'd like that people think that I'm a good guy and I, you know, I'm out there, I do things for others and I try to be a nice, respectful guy and represent yeah. the overall of nation in a good way. In a good way. What's, um, who from your, whether it's from your family or just someone you grew up with or, or someone from the, a teacher, whatnot, when you look back at specifically the area you grew up in, who had the biggest impact on you being successful i feel um, like you're gonna say your mom yeah my parents for sure uh, mm -hmm. you know they were uh, always very supportive and they wanted me to do good and if i needed something or if i needed a little motivation they was always there to try to help and so that's for sure i also like i was saying um in high school i had a couple good teachers i had a really good english teacher she got me into journalism and that really made me want to be a journalist. I also, it was either going to be journalism or um, I was thinking about going into metal work, like welding. Okay. I had a really good metals teacher in high school. And I was like, well, I can just go up to, I could go to Western Dakota Tech two years, get that degree, already start, start off making big bucks. You know, there's not a lot of people who work with their hands. So yeah, Rhonda Dorsey and what was the name? Buzz. I don't remember Buzz's last name. He was an old guy. He ended up dying, but he was he was awesome. He was cool. I loved him. Those are those are the kind of teachers everybody we had one at in my high school and it was Doc. And <laughs> that's all everybody would know who we're talking about. Oh yeah, he was he was great. So then um do you see yourself 
when you when you were writing for you said Native Son, yeah, or and look times, or look forward to times. When you look back on, especially being a freelancer, was there any stories that you pulled that that you wish people could read now? No, I don't think I did anything important enough. <laughs> they had the people on staff for that. <laughs> Yeah, so somebody who's going to stick around for a minute for the byline. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, as we as we are ending 2020, which has been a tough year, I know for a lot of fighters, it derailed the entire path of getting your fights and getting in. And COVID has yeah, screwed you know, up a lot. UFC, UFC and Bellator were still running shows, and my uh, company that I work with, PFL, they didn't have any shows, so I just. Uh, it's been a year now since my last fight, and I haven't gone a year without fighting since I was 15. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and even the guys that are fighting, Devin, Devin Clark from here in Sioux Falls mm -hmm. got to his UFC fight, and somebody backed out, and then the next guy that was going to take it failed this COVID test or passed it, failed it. He had a positive COVID, so Devin's fight got yanked anyway. Yeah. So there's been a lot of – Yeah, a lot of people in the, in the sports world where – 2020 was bad, but as we as we look at the at that year ending and coming to 2021, what is something that you feel was actually positive in 2020 and that you're going to carry over into the new year? I don't know. It just gave me time just to train. You know, a lot of times whenever you're training for a fight, you just focus on the fight. So you're focusing on the opponent and what you need to do for him. This just gave me a chance just to train and just focus on myself, try to improve in different areas and not have to worry about, Oh, well, I got to lose weight. I got to do this. I got to get ready for this guy. He does this. I need to watch out. And I was just able to focus on myself and do what I needed to do to get better a little bit everywhere. And hopefully I did. Maybe I didn't. Well, who knows? We'll see. When, when was the last time you were able to come home? I actually uh, was home over Christmas and I just got back to Phoenix a couple days ago. So you came just for the blizzard and then left. <laughs> no, it wasn't, it wasn't snowing in West River. It wasn't snowing in Pine Ridge. Oh my gosh, we got my dad went up to Spearfish and we went um, snowmobiling, and it was uh, it was still rocky and not a lot of snow on the trails. Oh and, really? Yeah, running into rocks and stuff, so that sucked. But it was still a good time. I like the snow. I want it to snow. I whenever I'm home, I want there to be a ton of snow. My dogs love the snow. I love the snow. I love facing them playing it. So you can keep that. I was I was out west this weekend and hiked in the Badlands on Sunday in a tank top and jeans without any gear and climbed and I'm, I you was go? super happy. I just I just went through the Badlands. I did the the saddleback trail without a horse okay. so there was no one there no tourists or anything and i thought i better be careful because no one will find my body until spring <laughs> no, it'll just be frozen out there yeah yeah but it was very nice here so and one one last question if you had to describe oglala lakota county south dakota to a stranger or to another south dakotan that had never been there how would you do that um it's it's got some of the like flat plains, but it's a lot more, it's got a lot more trees and like smaller, small buttes and stuff, um, which I guess is because um, it's on the res. So, the, you know, they made the reservations, uh, the land that's not as easily farmable. And so it's, it's not as good for farmland where it's just flat and kind of a little bit of rolling hills, but it's a lot prettier. It looks a lot better. It looks a lot nicer than you know, just the flat grasslands. So it's nice like that. And it's a good time. You know, there's got a little bit of Badlands National Park in there. You can go check out that. That's nice. And there's a couple of different things to do. What, um, what do you do when you go back? Snowmobile, things like that? No, well, no, I don't know anyone that owns a snowmobile. We went, we went up and uh, rented them in Spearfish, but I just kind of, well, this time I didn't do anything, you know, like right. nothing on, everything's closed. Um, no, there's no schools. You can't go in the gyms or anything. So I didn't see anybody, but most of the time when I go back, it's, I mean, the last time after um, my last fight, I went back and I was talking at a bunch of schools. I went to like 20 plus schools and 
I normally will jump in the gym and kind of work with whatever kids want to, mostly on wrestling. But, you know, if kids want football or boxing or something, I feel like I can help them with that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, just hang out. Sign autographs. Do what you do. <laughs> yeah. Sign autographs. Take pictures is what happens most of the time. But that's got to be, I think that's awesome wherever a person is from, if the kids can be, you're, you're, you're really, like you said, you're not a fictional character. You are real and you're from where they're from. And that, that is impactful to children anywhere, I think. Yeah. It seems like uh, kids kind of enjoyed it whenever I was going to all the schools and talking to them and they all wanted to get pictures and stuff. So yeah. made it feel like it wasn't a waste of my time. I mean, a lot of times I just kind of think of myself like some bum known. Just, so, just, just another guy that there? wrestles people. What was that? Just another guy that wrestles people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not even good at that either. So just some guy. But it's nice, you know. And then when I was going to all the different schools, I hadn't been to every school on the reservation before. There's a lot of smaller middle schools and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it was nice to go to different places that maybe I hadn't gone to. Went off the Went to Martin, spoke at Bennett County, uh, went to Lower Brule, went to Crow Creek, went to Todd County Middle School. So it was nice to get all over. Oh, I think I went East River, too. I went to Marty. There we go. And I was kind of scheduled to go to Flandreau, and uh, something ended up happening. I think they had a funeral or something, so I didn't yeah. end up going there. Well, I thank you for your time. I know you said that you're not a talker. Mike Hendrickson told me you're a talker. He said, <laughs> Mike does all the talking whenever he's talking with someone. He's, he, he carries the conversation. He's, he, I, he says that I'm the reason he knows about MMA because I was the only person he knew that was a fan of it. And then I know when you were on his show, like he was, he was messaging me. I have this bulldog kid here. <laughs> I was, I was like trying to find a radio at work and turn it on. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I thank you for your time and talking about where you're from. And I, I thank you for being a South Dakota kid that comes back. I don't want everybody to leave and not come back. <laughs> yeah. It gets, I like to be back. I enjoy being home. Phoenix. You can't, you can't fight forever. It's not the kind of thing you can do forever. No. You shouldn't either. So. No, no. <laughs> Randy Couture, we're looking at you. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, I will let you get back to uh, Phoenix and your career. And I look I look forward to seeing you on TV. But I also look forward to you coming back here to fight. So make well, it hopefully, happen. Hopefully. hopefully PFL goes to – there was talking about maybe going to Sioux Falls. So, But obviously not this year. They're doing – COVID protocols in Vegas, doing a bubble. Right. Stay but safe. When the world gets back to normal, cross my fingers. Right. All right. Well, I thank you so much. Have a good night. Thank you. You too. Good talking. Oh my gosh. I'm such a UFC fan. Woo! <laughs>